I hear a lot of discussion around mini LED versus OLED and which one you should buy, but ultimately right now, I think most would agree that OLED is a better technology thanks to the near instantaneous response times and per pixel local dimming, making it much faster and higher contrast than mini LED. But mini LED has a lot of potential thanks to its much higher brightness, regular RGB layout, and lower risk of burn-in. So while it will never be as fast as OLED, the question remains how many local dimming zones are necessary for mini LED to provide a level of contrast and image depth close enough to OLED that most people outside of trained reviewers would have a hard time distinguishing between the two. Well, today I've created examples of current and upcoming zone counts to demonstrate exactly that. So let's take a look. Wowzers, here we are in Photoshop. Can you believe it? But we're gonna start off with 384 local dimming zones. And as you can see here on the left, we do have the actual image that we're trying to display. And on the right is the, in theory, mini LED monitor this is what the backlight would look like. So this is not the image, but it's trying to convey how much depth can be shown, how much contrast you're actually gonna get. As you can see here, if we get rid of it, is 384 local dimming zones gonna be enough for a mini LED monitor? Clearly the answer is no. And this is where mini LED really started, was around this 300-ish zone count area. Yeah, it don't look good, do it? So let's go ahead and bring back that image. And now let's take a look at the next level here, 576 local dimming zones. Is it enough yet? Clearly the answer is still no. There's just not a whole lot of contrast in the image to the right. And on the left, there's a lot of contrast, a lot of detail there. So there's a lot of monitors out there where 576 local dimming zones, is it gonna make it look better? Yes, absolutely, because this area around it will be black and that's gonna give you a massive contrast boost, make the image look way, way better, but it's not enough to show micro contrast and that's what we need to try and well, go toe to toe with OLED. But in its current form, yucky, I don't want it. Let's move on to the best monitors of today. The best mini LED monitors, excuse me. And that would be around 1,152 local dimming zones. As you can see here, you do start to get just a little bit of micro contrast, but just not really a whole lot. Like there's little squares here, sure, but it's just nowhere near where we need to be to be getting to that image on the left. This ain't gonna do it, fellas. And that's been my experience so far is that is a 1000 local dimming zone monitor way better than LCD? Again, yes, it's way better. This is even a huge improvement over 576. And you take a look at that versus 384. That's a big jump in overall detail, but it's still not enough to get anywhere close to matching a per pixel local dimming zone display. So let's move on now to potential monitors that could be coming out and or TVs that are already out with around 2000 local dimming zones. Would doubling the zone count be enough? Eh, not really. While it's getting a lot better, it's just still not enough to show you the micro contrast that is here on the OLED display to the left, or at least the OLED display in theory. So. It's still not gonna do it, and that again has been my experience reviewing these displays. Just not quite there yet. What about 4,000 zones? We got some TVs that are out now, as well as some potential monitors coming out that could have 4,000 zones. If it has really, really good control, could that be enough? Again, the answer is just not quite. As you can see here, there's a huge improvement going from 2,000 to 4,000 zones. You can start to make out some detail here that was just simply not there at 2,000 and certainly not there at 1,000. And now let's compare 4,000 to 384. Wow, that's a huge, huge improvement in the contrast. You are starting to get some of that micro contrast, but it's just still not quite there. Okay, what do we have to do to get close enough to OLED where it's good enough and people won't care. Well, let's try 10,000 local dimming zones. They did actually show at CES a 10,000 zone display. I was there, I saw it, it looked really good. Is it good enough though? 
The answer is, I feel like just not quite. It's close because look here, you are actually starting to get some decent micro contrast. It's getting there, but it's just not quite good enough. There's some little details in here that just aren't quite coming across. I don't think this would be convincing enough for people to believe that this is an OLED. And so let's take a look next at 20,000 local dimming zones. Will it be enough? And you know what? It just might. Take a look here, 10,000 zones. You can see that there's just all these little areas where you can't quite make out the detail, but boom, you go to 20,000 and you can start to tell that there's not only pockets that should be darker than the lighter areas, but there's actually even gradients to those pockets. And I think this just might be good enough. 20,000 local dimming zones might be good enough for people to consider this close enough to OLED where it's not a big deal. In fact, you can even see here 10,000 zones right up here in the corner where there should be some trailing. You can't quite get that. There's gonna be a lot of blooming there or you're gonna have to dim it down. 20,000 zones, you can actually kind of get that to be a bit accurate. You can get some of those trailing details. In fact, if we go from 20,000 to 40,000 local dimming zones, which believe me, they're probably going to be doing this in not too long. This is where I think it no longer makes any sense to go beyond 40,000 local dimming zones. I mean, hey, if they do, that's great. But it looks like to me that the diminishing returns really kick in at around 20,000 local dimming zones. Is 40,000 better? Yes, you're getting better gradients here, and it is going to get you even closer to that OLED-like experience. But it's probably not going to be worth it to go from 20,000 to 40,000 zones. It doesn't seem like you're really gaining a whole lot other than some very minor details, something that could be smoothed out and probably doesn't really matter. So overall, I'd say that probably 20,000 zones is gonna be enough and it's gonna be the level that you're gonna wanna see on a TV or monitor for it to potentially fool you into you believing it could be an OLED. I think it's good enough. It's always gonna fall a little bit short, but it's gonna come close enough, and if the algorithm is tuned correctly, this could look really, really good. But to be honest with you, even if we get some 4,000 zone monitors that come out this year, that would still be a huge, huge improvement over, say, 1,000. I mean, look at how much more detail you get there, and I really hope that we do get 10,000 on monitors soon because that's gonna come fairly close, and I think that'll look really good as well. But yeah, I think you're gonna have to wait for 20,000, so, Here's hoping we get it at least on TVs pretty soon here. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.